Hospital of Porter's pride and dignity stop the new world order. Welcome to Panmo TV and welcome to this UFO Disclosure 2021 phone home. Why have I called it that? Well, uh, could this be the year of disclosure, of course, 2021? Yeah, that's always a, a question that's got to, to always comes to mind, which is the point of this series of videos. Now, the there, there is an opportunity coming up, and it's actually coming up today, and it actually starts at the time of recording in just over two hours. Now, by the time most of you see this, by the time you see this, the event will either be underway or it'll be over. If it's over, don't worry, there's recordings, and you can still take part by by what you do. And I'll describe more about that event in a minute, but it's called The Big Phone Home. And um, I'm going to basically get this video done and uploaded as soon as possible so that a lot of you will be there to take part with it because it looks quite good. It looks like something I want to get involved with. But what else what, what else do we talk about today? Because there's, there's still a bit of a UFO news I want to get through uh, in the disclosure front since the last UFO disclosure video. Um, still no updates on uh, the actual date for the UAPTF report. So still could be Cynthia's Day. We're still not sure, but some, I'll let you know. But... Prince Philip. Now, um, as you know, Prince Philip has left this mortal coil. He's gone to that great reptile house in the sky. And I've done a, a video all about that, as you know. But um, there's something I want to go into in a bit more detail, uh, which I didn't cover in the live stream I did on Prince Philip's death. And this is basically a... It's actually basically uh, an article by Dr. David Clark on his folklore website. I'm not going to put a link to that. <laughs> You, you can find it, it's, it's easy enough to find, just put in Dr. David Clark and just go to his website and it'll be the first article on there. It's actually by him and his, I think uh, it was co-authored by his trusty psychic Andy Roberts. Um, by the way, readers of Roswell Rising, um, you may have noticed that I have a sceptic in it called Hector Robzark. Now, the name Robzark... Some I don't know if it, I don't think anyone's actually guessed this, but I thought, where does, where's the name, where do I get the name Robzark? It's actually a... It's actually a contraction of Roberts and Clark. <laughs> because they're, they're always together, Andy Roberts and Dr. David Clark. Yeah, two big UFO scappers. But anyway, this one, this one is... This article um, is interesting. It's interesting to read, actually. It is, of course, sceptic. Sceptical, it's told from the sceptic perceptive per perspective, because that's what Dr. David Clark is. He thinks it's all... Well, you know... The clues in his job title, Professor of Folklore and Journalism at Hallam University, Sheffield. Yeah, whatever, it, if that's correct, I don't know, but it's, I did, I actually did see a live show with um, Clark uh, at the Greenwich Skeptics in the Pub, and I did do a report, I, I don't think I did a video about it, I think I did a written report, but I went with Colin Wolford and we, we staked it out. Uh, was, I can't remember if I, remember if I was wearing my disguise or not, I don't know. But anyway, Right, Prince Philip was very, very keen on UFOs, as according to this article by Dr. David Clark called The Royal Flying Sorcerer. <laughs> Sorcerer spelled like saucer, yeah. And he did, he had an interest, this, this, the peak of his interest was actually between 1950 and 55, which is when they just was just following the late 1940s global flap, when everybody was talking about UFOs. It was kind of almost... It almost went mainstream in a way similar to how it is today, actually. But the focus was all on a lot of individuals, such as, um, like, for example, George Adamski, who uh, contactees, people like that, contactees. Um, and as you know, uh, Charles Scott has his own views on George Adamski, and Steve Mumbling uh, thinks otherwise. And um, here's other challenges in the chat bot in the. In the comments section, we'll often get into debates about it. But the point is, Philip actually met Adamski, which is quite interesting. He he had a keen interest in the subject, which may say something about his origins. As somebody somebody actually mentioned this in the chat box during the live stream, maybe this says something about his origins. But um, this this article actually explains a little bit more. Um, it's it's interesting what it leaves out. As long with what it what it gives, what's in there is interesting, but it's also interesting what Clark leaves out of his article. I'll come to that in a minute. But basically, he was very very keen on on UFOs, and so was Lord Mountbatten, who was Admiral of the Fleet at the time. Uh, you may have seen my video, the last Viceroy of India, about um, about Mountbatten, which, which was a review of the film, the last Viceroy. Um, 
but he was very very keen on on the UFO subject and they, Philip and he used to get together with others now it's it's really amazing but there were several people on the staff particularly Air Marshal Sir, Pe Air Marshal Sir Peter Horsley who I'll come to in a minute but believe it or not they, they read Flying Saucer Review which was the the principal UFO magazine at that time um, it was delivered they, they subscribed and it was delivered by post to Buckingham Palace every issue from um, I think 1950 onwards and um, the uh, they also this is this is something I didn't know now Clark has put this in his article this is something I really didn't know but they they were both into it that is uh, Mountbatten and Prince Philip they were both into the subject far more than I thought because they actually interviewed witnesses they actually did now um, Mountbatten used his contacts in the Royal Air Force to get a hold of pilots you know mil military pilots who are witnesses and his contacts within these intelligence services and police to find um, others people who'd seen them on the ground these could be um, these could be police officers on night patrol, for example. You know, like uh, Tony Dodd. Did. Tony Dodd had had his experience where he was he was on a patrol at night in his squad car, and he just this thing flew over him when he was just stopping to chat to another officer. Um, Alan Godfrey, of course, as you know, he he was he was also driving. He was also on a motorised patrol at night time near Todmorden in, in West Yorkshire, and um, he ran into this. This strange object that about you know by the side of the road, which then he has missing time, etc., etc., and um, he spoke out about that as well. He he spoke out about that too, um, which I've covered before. And they, these could also be just uh, these could be civilians, people, you know, man walking dog and canic chase, etc., etc. But they all were interviewed through the normal channels through the UFO reporting section but then some some of them the more interesting ones were invited to Buckingham Palace to meet Lord Mountbatten and Prince Philip they actually did they actually went there and the witnesses were interviewed at Buckingham Palace one of them for example is a man called James Howard now he was a, a he was an airline captain with BOAC BOAC is an old I don't think it exists anymore it was basically absorbed into British Airways but it was an old carrier from uh, the early days now he was an airline captain, and he saw formation of UFOs while he was flying while he was on an, on a nighttime flight over the Atlantic in 1954. Uh, it's uh, quite something. And what's more, Prince Philip actually t toured North America when, with the, with the Queen when she was Princess Elizabeth in 1951, and they did a tour, and they were welcomed all over the U.S., Canada, and went to Mexico, a couple of other places. And Philip took time out of the schedule to go and meet George Adamski. And I didn't know that. I really didn't know that. That's, that's a completely new one on me. Um, and they were not alone. Now, some, some other people who were involved in the UFO research project were some other royals, not English royals, Dutch ones. Um, Queen Juliana and Prince Bernhard of the Netherlands. Queen Juliana was the Dutch queen... I think for most of the 20th century, she was, um, yeah, I remember, I remember actually when she died and was replaced by Princess Beatrix, who became Queen Beatrix, because there was one of the cross, one of the ships we used to travel on the cross North Sea ferries, there was one called Queen Union and one called Qu Princess Beatrix, which was renamed Queen Beatrix, I remember. But uh, Bernhard, Prince Bernhard, was the consort of Queen Union, in the same way Philip is the consort of Queen Elizabeth. And um, interesting thing about Prince, another interesting thing about Prince Bernhard, he was one of the founder members of the Bilderberg Group. In 1954, he got together a, a whole load of uh, very important people in finance, in industry, in politics, etc., at the Bilderberg Hotel in Oosterbeek, Netherlands. And from there, the Bilderberg Group, and they met every year since. And now, of course, the rest is history. We know all about it. Um, when they went to Watford in 2013, I was there too, to, not as a guest, <laughs> to, but to protest. Now, what's what's interesting about this article by Clark, as informative as it is, you know, by first Skeppy, he's quite interesting, I must say. He's no Mick West. I mean, he does have some originality to him, Clark. You've got to give him that. But. Um, 
What he doesn't report in this article is what Sir Peter Horsley, I know he does mention the book as Sir Peter Horsley wrote an autobiography called Sounds from Another Room and Clark does mention this in his in his article however however I hope you, the dehumidifier is making a noise I hope that's I, I'm not going to switch it off it's, um, it's just a quiet purr I hope it doesn't bother you if it does let me know and I'll, I'll, I'll make sure it's always off in future videos but um, it, now Peter, Sir, Peter, Sir Peter Horsley was an interesting chap in World War II he flew hurricanes and spitfires and he was um, he shot down many enemy aircraft in the Battle of Britain after the war he was on the organising committee of NATO along with Admiral Hill Norton another man who's familiar to the UFO scene and has, he's something of a hero actually for ufologists around the world especially in this country um, but like Hill Norton um, Sir Peter Horsley when he was you know, he was a very very level headed sound of mind kind of chap so for example one of what what he did next was he was put in charge of strike command now strike command was britain's part of the nuclear deterrent basically this was before the trident before the polaris and trident submarines and things like that um, this was basically, and before the land-based missiles that were being developed at that time in, in the United States, like the Minutemen, the, uh, the Strike Command, there was a fleet of bombers with, with nu nuclear weapons on them, and the, in the event of war, they would take off and they would drop their bombs on the Soviet Union. And um, Sir Peter was the com in command of that unit. Now, that's not a job anyone can apply for. And I tell you what, while you were in that job, you'd be constantly monitored, constantly checked over. Any sign of mental instability, and uh, you, you know, quite frankly, you will be removed with, from your responsibility for those weapons. They can't have nutcases running. They can't have nutcases running a nuclear deterrent. You'll end up with a real-life doc, Dr. Strangelove situation. So then you've got to ask. So then you've got to ask. I've asked the skeptics. Maybe this is why Clark has omitted it, or maybe, you know, I'm not saying that Clark left this out because he thought, I, I can't explain that. I can't. I can't explain it to Weir, so I'm not going to put it in my article. I, I'm not saying he did that. But I, I you know, he, he maybe it was just brevity. Something like that. He didn't have time to go into that area. But you see, it does fly in the face of, of the worldview of people like Dr. David Clark and Andy Roberts. If these are not the stereotypes they want us to be. These, these are not the stereotypes. You know, these are not the people who wear tinfoil hats or wear, you know, anoraks and stand on muddy hillsides in Wellingtons with cameras pointing at the sky. No offence, Winkeech, but that's that's how they want us. They, that's how they want to portray us. Unfairly, of course, but that's just what they do. Uh, so Peter doesn't fit into that at all. Now, the the incident in question. Which Sir Peter, which Sir Peter was involved in, and that Clark doesn't mention in his article, is that one day I think it was um, it was in the mid 1950s, um, and I should I should know this because I've written about this subject. I've written about this object many many times. This particular incident, a friend of his, a lady he knew, invited him to go and see to, to stay at her to visit her at her home in, in a place in London, just a ta London townhouse, and said, there's a gentleman here who wants to meet you, Mr. Janus wants to meet you and speak to you. And Sir Peter said, yeah, for sure, we'll pair us up, you know, throw us together, we'll have a conversation. Um, so when Mr. Janus turned up, now Sir Peter doesn't describe him as looking particularly unusual, so I assume he was very human looking, he was a human, he was a very, uh, he was humanoid to the point of being indistinguishable from human but Sir Peter said this man was an alien this man was extraterrestrial he seemed to know an awful lot about strike command which he shouldn't have done because a lot of it is a lot of it's classified you just uh, you know he gave he spoke to Peter in a way it meant knew he had a lot of information about strike command which he shouldn't have had because it's classified and he also so Peter got this distinct impression that Mr. Janus was reading his mind. There was kind of telepathic communication there, and he talked about that. He talked about a lot of things. He 
He talked about what he talked with Sir Peter about is actually some of the many things that a lot of contactees report. If you define contactee as someone who is not just abducted and poked and prodded, but has some kind of interaction with the aliens, such as conversations or telepathic communications, that's if you, that's what I think you describe as a contactee, which Sir Peter is. And a lot of the contactees actually say this. Janus warned Sir Peter. He said, "Your planet is in in dire trouble." because of environmental damage and this was in the 1950s long before there was all this fuss about the environment which um, many of it many of which is justified and we know that today and he also said um, he, he talked about the dangers of war and of nuclear war and things like that and um, about how you know, there was this nuclear arms race and the, he and his people were very concerned about that <coughs> and also um, spirituality this is another thing a aliens often do talk about this he talked about um, he talked about the, the he talked about the divine nature of the universe and God, the consciousness of the universe, and how he was c concerned that different religions were warring against each other. Again, rather classic and quite commonplace contacty um, messages that the aliens give people. And so Peter eventually said goodbye to Mr. Janus and went home and goodbye to his friend, this lady. And um, I don't think he met them again. And he hasn't actually reported. He hasn't given any more information away, but I've not read the book Sounds from Another Room, and this is just a small part of it. But it's just very interesting. And of course, this was the man, he was the equerry to Prince Philip. Now, an equerry means a. Um, an equerry is basically the personal assistant of someone in the royal family, and he was for Prince Philip. Hmm, so that's, that's quite something. So, a lot, obviously, like. Um, a lot can be said about Prince Philip, about who he was, about the legend and the truth behind the legends and all the different other things that I discussed in my live stream about Prince Philip. I won't put links in the description box, you can find these things. But um, on top of that you have another side to him which is very very interesting and I thought needed to be explored in more detail. So I know what all of you now want me to t comment on, you want me to comment on that strange green screen, low, you know, that low light night scope image that was released the other day, and the Pentagon have confirmed it's real. Yeah, this is an interesting short clip, it's only 20 seconds long, which is a shame, very short, a lot of these clips unfortunately are very short, um, released, well it was actually leaked by some people within the US Navy to Jeremy Corbell and George Knapp and I mean I know that you uh, not everyone trusts those guys okay fair enough but um, the, when this leak happened the Pentagon then confirmed they were real now what you see is um, an image through a night scope so it's what the sailors on the ship used to see in the dark basically and it's it's night time and a ship at sea on an operation won't be running any lights, so um, it'll be completely dark, so it can't be seen. Um, and what you see is you see some lights in the sky. Now, the good news is there's low cloud. Now, low cloud is actually quite good. I know a lot of sky watchers moan if they get the cloud, it's cloudy and rainy. But low cloud is actually a very, very good control when you're sky watching, because it eliminates astronomical normalities, stars, planets, and you know, meteors. You'd be surprised how often these things are mistaken for alien spacecraft. Um, the low cloud, you can't see those things, so it eliminates those astronomical normalities. So you see some lights passing overhead. Now the camera zooms in on one of them and it takes on a distinct triangular form. It looks structured. Now, the thing is, I know a lot of you, Steve Mumbling right now is shouting at me, Ben, Ben, go and watch Mick's, Mick West's video about this, Ben. Go and watch it. He proves it's a load of absolute rubbish. All right, well, um, well, it's, well if he is, I mean, Steve Mumbling's been quiet lately. I hope he's all right. But anyway, am I... Uh, the answer to that is I have watched Mick West's video on this subject. I watch all of Mick West's videos. Um, most of the time he's wrong, but in this case, unfortunately, he makes a good point. The The point is, firstly, he says that the... Uh, now, uh, this this is a bit dubious, actually. This, for his first thesis is a bit dubious. 
he said basically the triangular shape of the light is caused by what he calls a bokeh and I've never heard of that before B-O-K-E-H it's actually a triangular filter that's put over the lens of the camera now that to me is a bit dubious however he then makes another point which I've got to credit him seems likely and that is the flash the lights are flashing on the there's they're flashing it's not a steady light the light is flashing continuously and unfortunately the pattern of light, the pattern of those flashes indicates that it is an aircraft navigation beacon so that is unfortunately true however that's not that is not the most interesting part of this story you see the, the this is what's getting all the attention this is what's getting the media f attention maybe deliberately maybe the media are drawing it you deliberately towards this particular vote video because it's not the most interesting bit the most interesting part is the other descriptions now Corbell and now nah, met this sailor from the USS Russell who which was where this was filmed it was, wasn't long ago either it was it was last month it was not like you're not going back to like 10 or 15 years like with the a tip stuff the TTSA stuff which was stuff from years before a very very old material you know 10 15 years ago this was taken like um the previous month or something but there was others there was others as well they were now, you see they were contacted by numerous people they have a still photo as well which they haven't published yet but they were they were contacted by sailors from two other ships the USS Kidd which is another which is a destroyer like the USS Russell and the USS Omaha which is a um, offshore patrol vessel and they also had strange experiences as well and they're speaking now to Corbell and Knapp so hopefully we'll get an update on this soon and Richard Dolan has, he seems to be back in form he's coughed up his black pill and he's talking a lot more positively and he did a video about the about this which is really quite something it, he seems a lot more encouraged than he was when he did his black pill video so um, hmm we'll see where that goes anyway but um, yeah social UFO social media has gone nuts about this I mean UFO Twitter which is always good for all, all the, all the, all the um, big names are on there Mick West UFO Jesus and everyone else they're all on that they regularly post on there and it's worth following you going to UFO Twitter following the accounts and following that hashtag hmm, hope it doesn't get bad now there's a lot of talk there has been for a couple of months about a mythic triangle some mythic triangle footage that is there's supposedly some images it's a motion picture rather like the TTSA stuff and it's it, it shows it apparently is a very very detailed close encounter with a triangular object taken from a fighter jet now this this is I did wonder for a while if the USS Russell footage might be it but of course it's not because it's not a close encounter and it's not that significant so this this mythic triangle footage that's out there is still out there and we haven't seen it yet we'll have to wait and see Right, how many of you saw Sir Tony of Toppingshire on talk radio? Yep, he Tony Topping was on talk radio, and he wasn't just phoning up us. He wasn't just phoning up and sort of tricking his way onto the call like some kind of UFO groiper. He was a guest. He was a guest on the Mark Dolan show. Mark Dolan, no relation to Richard, has a show every afternoon on talk radio. It's one of the biggest radio stations in the country, and Tony was on for ten minutes. He got ten minutes on the air and he did a good job he really he was in this very powerful position suddenly one of us was suddenly had this mouthpiece on the entire mainstream media with millions of listeners and he I must say Tony exploited that opportunity very well indeed he said you know um, he was positive he was simple um, he said there was a split in the authorities at the moment which is why you're getting all these leaks and it could lead to disclosure with a capital D the end of the truth embargo but yeah, also he, he he mentioned he got to mention his book and his website. Mark Dolan did that as well, so that's out there. So Tony's going to everyone who heard that show is going to find Tony's website, and then f on top of that, probably find mine as well, and probably find all the others. <clears throat> so to Tony, well done, mate, well done. Now, I've always said, um, if, if you want to watch watch this, by the way, it's on YouTube. It's on the Talk Radio YouTube from a couple of weeks ago one of the Mark Dolan shows and I, if you want if you want actually it's best to go to her Panwo voice what I've done 
a report on Tony's appearance and um, it, it's you can see actually um, that they, uh, there's an absolute timestamp so you can what you can watch his interview exactly so you know I'm I've often said this I've said it before I'll say it again when it comes to getting involved with the mainstream media it's it's like the drugs in the old Grange Hill you know just say no but you see I if you, if you ask to take part in a documentary, that's what I mean. When they, if they're going to pre-record you and you take part in a documentary, tell them to get stuffed because they're going to screw you. They're going to screw you over. They're going to make you look like a clown. But just look at what look at what's come out. Look at the kind of documentaries on UFOs and the UFO communities that have come out over the last few years. You don't want to be portrayed in that way. They've, I was asked to be on on three of them, and I said no on every occasion. I said no way and when I saw the result I was very glad the exception I make an exception for when you're going live because when you go live if you're like on a live radio or TV show like Tony was on talk radio like Gary Heseltine was on this morning when he was debating Chris French um, it's that is worth doing because they cannot edit you of course there, there's someone in the gallery with a little red button if you swear they'll cut you off you know, but they can't actually you, you can't just do what you want but you, you, they can't actually change the context of your words as they would if they pre-record you. So it's worth going on live. If you get the opportunity to go onto a TV show live, it's worth doing. And I'm, I'm, I'm looking into doing that myself. I'm available I've, you know, for that sort of thing. I'm also um, I am, uh, looking into ways of doing the Groiper thing as well and getting onto uh, a, a radio show and asking lots of tough questions about UFOs, like Richard, like Richard D. Hall did with David Cameron, which is out <laughs> that I will never ever stop gloating and laughing and really enjoying that. I thought that was absolutely fantastic. Absolutely had him up against the rails. I mean, it's obvious Cameron was a knobhead, didn't know a damn thing, and just made a joke about the whole thing. Hmm. So Mm. So that's what's been going on lately. I'm sure there's a lot more to there's, there'll be a lot more to report soon. But uh, in the meantime, let's just go over and look at the phone home, the uh, big phone home, and also other exo political news. And so let us begin with the big phone home. As you can see, um, well, this is uh, I don't know what time it is when you're watching this video, but when I'm recording this. The countdown clock says it's 1 hour, 32 minutes and 58 seconds until it starts. This is the big phone home. This is this event which uh, uh, really looks good here. A call, write, tweet, activate, mobilise. And this, these are the people who are doing it. This is the Michael Mataluni and Luis Chimenez. These two guys who are the print, print, and I'll be watching that when it starts. I think, obviously, like, um, by the time I'm recording, by the time I finish recording this, I'll have... Be ed probably be editing this video when it's actually going on. An unprecedented gathering of professionals and amateurs from across the spectrum of UAP research and activism as we reach out to share our concerns with relevant government officials and share our best practice for future success in the arena of UAP truth. Inter I find it interesting, I must say, that the word UAP has already kind of become a replacement for UFO. Now, it's just, this is going to cause a bit of a problem for um, the powers that be, or powers that were, or the powers that shouldn't be, whichever you prefer, like. They are going to have a, a bit of an issue to deal with because, you see, the term UFO itself is, is today loaded down with cultural baggage, which is, why the, which is why modern governments prefer the term UAP. Unidentified aerial phenomena just means the same as unidentified flying object but it doesn't have that association that connotation with loonies like myself but the problem is the loonies like me have already kind of adopted and culturally appropriated to use the modern expression uap because <laughs> ufo you see ufo didn't the term ufo has didn't exist before 1980 1953 because um, that was when the robertson panel decided to use it instead of flying saucer because they they didn't want to be labeled nutters and they switch to UAP because they don't want to be labelled nutters by using UFO. But now, of course, the nutters are using UAP. So what are they going to say next? They're going to have to come up with something new, aren't they, already? And this, this poster, the poster is really amazing here, the big phone home. It's got some interesting people in here. I don't know all these people involved, but it has, for example, Luis Elizondo, of course. Post-Disclosure World, who is, of course, 
bit UFO Jesus, Ryan Robbins. Yeah, check out his channel, man. It's brilliant. Jeremy Corbell, Ryan Sprague. Ryan Sprague, is, uh, he has a something called Somewhere in the Skies, which is a radio show, a bit like a Panwo radio, all about me. All about, sorry, all about UFOs. It's a bit like me. So he has that as well. Alexandra Rojas, that UFO podcast. I've not seen that. So there's UAP Media UK. My goodness, that looks good, doesn't it? I don't know all these people, these, these names that are on here. You can look them up for yourself. I'm just going, I'm going to go through them all. But um, there's End UAP Secrecy. That's Disclosure Team, Project Unity. Uh, Stephen Bassett. Yay! They've misspelled his name. So it's, it's Bassett has two Ts. But yay! Stevie, oh, the best guy in the world. Yes, he's going to be there. Uh, Clay, uh, Chase Clodsey, who I think blocked me on Facebook. I don't know why. Um, who else? Let's have a look. I see there's a lot of people here I don't know. Some new, probably new people who are involved in this who I'm not really familiar with very much. Um, but there's something called Majestic Q Clearance. That's interesting. Yeah, it's going to be good. But anyway, it says here, the, this is... This is uh, going to be basically be an activism. It's an online activism event. It says here, um, government, Obama, Trump and Biden administrations, including former Senate Majority Leader, Le Majority Leader Harry Reid, former Director of National Intelligence John Ratcliffe and former Deputy Assistant Secretary of Defense for Intelligence Christopher Mellon, Vice Chair of the Senate Intelligence Committee Marco Rubio, former Director of the Central Intelligence Agency John Brennan. And I think these are the people you've got to write to. All these people, that organisations within the government, possess evidence confirming the existence of objects of unknown origin displaying advanced operational capabilities that challenge our scientific understanding. That's right. That's right. It says here, professionals. This is another category. Join the big phone home and we will, we will be an unprecedented gathering of professionals who focus on UAP research and disclosure. We have included journalists, investigators, podcasters and activists from across the UAP UFO spectrum to request governmental access to critical data by leveraging the following of online personalities and investigators. We seek to, excuse me, <laughs> request the support of local state representatives in this endeavor. Watch our full YouTube telethon on the 24th of April 21 and support us. We need your help. If you've ever wondered about the UAP UFO topic and, and as an obsession or passing interest, right, well, I think I'm the former. <laughs> We need your voice. We urge you to encourage your favourite podcaster, YouTuber or journalist or UFO host to call Congress and lend their voice towards more UAP UFO transparency. We encourage everyone to use our extensive call list to find our local and state representatives' addresses, phone numbers and Twitter handles. Right. I think this is aimed at Americans, but of course I can. I obviously can't get involved in that not be, unless I am American. I couldn't actually go calling congressmen and presidents and things. Uh, that uh, only american citizens can do that but i of course can i can contact my mps and things like that well well my mp is annalisa dodds who is a r rather horrible new labor kind of left center kind of feminist type and i don't think much of her but i'll see if there's anyone else i can call that's the thing to do it looks good doesn't it i think um it's quite, i'm quite happy to see this and i'm very very pleased to be taking part in it in what's the time now Ooh. One hour, 19 minutes and 45 seconds. There's not an awful lot more to say in terms of exopolitical news at the moment, except really that I'm pleased to say it looks like the conference conference circuit is starting to, well, it's, it's starting to get back on its feet. It's not back, fully back yet, but it's sort of picking itself up and staggering. It's um, bumping along the bottom. Um, now, contacting the desert, I believe, is going ahead, but I think it's going to be virtual. I think the last thing I heard was that it was going to be virtual, and it's not cheap. I, I would be willing to pay quite a lot of money to go to one of these events in the States, um, if it was like, to, to actually be there. See, this, it's all about being there, really. Conf that's what conferences are about. I mean, I've said this many, many times. You know, the, the speakers and everything are just an excuse for us to get together. But it looks like the uh, contact in the desert is going ahead in a virtual sense, I think, right? Now, UFO Megacon is apparently going to be there. There's a comprehensive list of conferences that the PRG has produced. So uh, we we'll just, I do, would like to go to one or the other. Now, I, I've always thought to myself, I'd like to go to Roswell at some point. I've been, it's one of these things I've been going to do for as long as I can bloody remember. It's 
oh, e endlessly. Um, how many times? How many times I said I'm going to go to Roswell? I mean, I've written three books about the place. It's the centre of UFO law. I should. It's one of these things on things to go, places to go before you die. And ironically, you no, know, I have saved up enough money to go. I think I could afford to go, but not if obviously it's not if the lockdown continues not if there's virtual events only and there's no roswell festival i would like to go for the roswell festival i would like to go without um, uh, without being having to have, have a test or a vaccine to get on a plane which i will refuse to do so uh, i'll have to we'll have to wait and see how that goes but um there are a number of conferences here the star wars conference is laughlin that is the 14th of the december that's quite a long while and there's the move on symposium in july that's apparently going ahead there's virtual contacts in the desert virtual space ufo fest which is actually september the 11th there's the megacon which is actually live oh it's according to this 12th of june apparently it's live yeah that's good there's mufon pennsylvania mufon uh, there's the uh, ozark mountains conference the conscious life Eps expo the sonoma symposium which includes uh, the ufo um, events as well and the good thing is there is also events in this country and i'll be going to some of them now uh, the for example now there, there is going to there is listed to be in the first weekend of july an awake and aware which as you know i i love and i've been to many many times whether i'll be able to go to that i don't whether it will go ahead i don't know yet it's still it's apparently there's a question mark over that but Miles Johnson is doing a basis project conference if you go to his channel and you'll see his fast blast all about it. So I'll definitely be going to that one. I've, I've already said that if, if uh, I, I might also ask Miles if I can be a backup speaker. So I, if someone pulls out, I might end up being a speaker. Hmm. Now, Outer Limits magazine are doing a, a conference in August, which I think I'm banned from. Or at least I was I was banned from the first two um whether i'll be allowed to go to this one i don't know but uh, the reasons why i've banned it's all to do with well it's, it's, a, it's a long story which i've told before but um i'll go into it another time if you really want to know if you want to know the truth just email me i'll send you some links but um yeah the conference circuit is it's sort of oh, taken the first steps to recovery but it's still got a long way to go let's just hope that recovery continues and so that was UFO Disclosure 2021, my latest instalment here on April 24th. Let's just see uh, what goes. The, good. I'll tell you what, this year is rocketing by. And so much for the reverse quickening ones following the 2012 mind calendar thing. It's not happening. If anything, the quickening is still continuing. It's accelerating. I don't know, it seems not long ago it was New Year. But, um, well... Uh, the good news is that that's means we're, we're getting to a point possibly where we can have more freedoms, which um, I would look forward to if that happens, as I've said on previous videos. Now, there's a lot coming up. As some of you know already, because uh, Dr. Stephen Greer has made this clear, we are approaching the 20th anniversary of the famous UFO Disclosure Project press conference on the 5th of May 2001 in the National Press Club. As a result, um, I'm going to do a special about that. It'll probably be a live stream. Um, and you can you can go, come and watch it, or you can go and watch Stephen Greer's own pro production for that. He's doing his own live uh, seminar for uh, the, to mark this occasion. The difference is between me and him is Greer is going to charge you twenty to seventy five pounds to watch his. I will charge you nothing at all to watch mine. So uh, hmm. weigh it up, guys. Which you think? Come on, you know which one you want to watch, don't you? So yeah, we'll be we'll be celebrating and discussing the famous press conference, and I'm asking, you know, what go? Yeah, will there be another? Or why did why did the first one not lead to disclosure after 20 years? And will there be another one coming soon? Things like that. We'll just be going over various questions, and of course, because it'll be a live stream, I think I will make it a live stream. I think I've decided. You in you the viewer can talk to me and and ask me questions about it. Should be great, won't it? But I mean, before that, there'll probably be a comments reply video and um, other things. And somebody, can someone check on Steve Mumbling and make sure he's all right? Because I haven't heard from him for a while. Thank you for watching Hapanmo TV. Hospital porters, pride and dignity. Stop the new world order.